Well, a group is asking the U.S. to place a visa ban on 80 senators who allegedly voted against the electronic transmission of election results in Nigeria. The democracy vanguard of Nigeria in diaspora wants President Muhammad Buhari to withhold assent to the, any electoral act amendment bill. The letter named 80 senators, including 52 that voted against the election, electronic transmission of results, and 28 senators that were absent at the Red Chamber on the voting day at the Senate last week. All right. Uh, we're joined now by our Director of News. Yes, we've got to get used to that. Director of News, no longer the political <laughs> editor. Thank you so much, and congratulations once again for those who don't know already. Thank All right, so, so uh, consensus yeah. candidates, that's the way the APC chooses to go. Is it another name for imposition of candidates? Is it good for democracy at all? Well, it's, it's a big challenge for the party, but um, mm -hmm. uh, the democratic thing to do is to actually subject the entire system to primaries where everyone who is capable of running for an office decides to purchase a form. Because if you are saying that there should be consensus, then why do you need to sell forms to people? Then and the decision will just... Yeah, 40 I mean, million very, naira. Yeah, and all of that. So, mm -hmm. I mean, then the consensus outside the consensus should be that you should hold consensus then before you come and agree that there should be no primaries. Hmm. So it's a big challenge for the party to come out at this point in time to say this. This is an interim national caretaker committee secretary saying this. Uh, Article 20 of the party's constitution actually allows for consensus. Building. Exactly what I was going but to say that to you. That, that's what I said. Uh, the, the, you know, uh, all parties have agreed. And then even when there's an agreement that there should be a consensus, mm -hmm. what the party's constitution says is that there should still be a yes or no, no. vote undertaken on behalf of the consensus candidate to ensure that there is no imposition or uh, uh, yeah. allegations of imposition so to say, and all of that. So uh, we, we shouldn't be hearing this because yeah. it looks like the interim national caretaker committee is trying to drive an agenda considering that the party at the moment has shifted its convention twice, okay. yeah. then it will be sending the wrong signals to people. And that's well, why you see people like the uh, uh, Zafara now? State uh, Party leader, uh, Th that's where uh, former was, party leader, was going uh, to do Yeri, Yeri, the former you governor. Know, yeah, you know, uh, let's noise. talk about Zafara. That, that case, I was saying, well, they said it's in their constitution. So if it is, mm. they may, maybe they're not going after, foul. After primaries, mm -hmm. you can still build consensus mm -hmm. or you can build consensus. Uh, they have not done primaries. But they have not done primaries yet. Yes, so we haven't. don't know. We may be running, <laughs> running ahead, ahead of them. <laughs> so we'll wait for them to run primaries. All right, let's talk about Zafara, Yeri. I know that Marafa, who is one of the party leaders, the point in time mm. uh, took APC to court, looks like another, uh, there's another water boiling. Uh, he's saying he's going to go to court because he's saying the people in the committee appointed in Zafra State are not uh, members. Is he just trying to talk or is it being real? I mean, how can, how can they bring in people who are not Card Party carrying members. members. Now, it doesn't sound. The, the, the situation here is that um, it, it, it actually beats the mind of a lot of people in Zamfara and outside Zamfara mm. uh, when they look at uh, former Governor Yeri actually saying this because he, his former SSG, Secretary to State Governor for eight years, who is the Secretary of the Party at the moment, mm. had been with him for eight years and he is representing Yeri's camp in that three-man committee set up oh. by the APC. Mm -hmm. So this same uh, former Governor Yari was on the podium on the day that Governor Matawale was defecting. Oh, yeah. Don't mm -hmm. forget, Senator Kabiru Marafa refused to go to that yeah. uh, defection. Yeah. So he why is he not coming to say that he may likely go to court? That, uh, you know, this, this looks like an imposition, that he's still the party leader. Former Governor Ahmed Yerima, who is a former governor like himself, has said that he will support Governor Matawale because that is what the constitution and that is mm. the, the precedence that said that when you are serving governor and you come into the party, you automatically become the leader of the party. Well, so if that is the, the, the situation, why is Governor Yari trying to cause a confusion? And don't forget the interim mm. caretaker 
committee chairman in the state. He's a serving senator. Yes, he defected to the people's dem from the People's Democratic Party mm. to the APC. They all defected with the governor. There was an agreement that says that the defection, those who defected from PDP should have a slot. Those who were the older members of APC should have a slot. And then the former leader of the APC and, and his group should also well, have they, a slot. They, they, they and overall, they shared it yeah. that way. That's why you see that the PDP block that is coming into the party has interim Ketika committee chairman. And then you, you, you see it's di distributed. And moreover, this is just an interim committee that's well, been set up. Yeah. Once they, they, they start the Congresses, mm -hmm. this committee will be dissolved after a new ESCO emerges. But wouldn't a lot of damage have been done by then? Let's talk about this uh, group that's calling for a visa ban uh, for 80 senators for rejecting e-transmission. Uh, they also went ahead to ask President Buhari not to uh, put pen to paper on that uh, particular Bill. No, well, they and have from revelations coming out now, we're hearing that the NCC had actually gone into this uh, agreement or MOU with the uh, with INEC, and they came up with a result showing that about over eighty percent of Nigeria has internet penetration. So they may have misled. That's the NCC may have misled the House in that uh, you know hearing on Friday. What do you make of all of this? Well, what, what, what we would like to establish is that some of the GSM operators, the telecoms companies, if you look at the data released by them, proud to now, since 2018 and 2019, their target, you see that they have all, uh, they are, they've passed the 50% that the NCC was discussing about. The NCC mm. figures that they were discussing about was 2018 projections. And this is and, two and years yeah, after. Yes, and then this is two years after. Now, well, why well. did the NCC withhold that kind of information. information. And now we have also heard that it's, it's actually 3G that is necessary, not 4G or 1G or 2G. Now, uh -huh. you could hear Honorable Magbila actually in the House of Representatives saying that we could transmit on 1G, which is text messages, uh, while we had heard others saying that, look, you can still do 2G. But we are also hearing that it's 3G. And if it's 3G, the mm -hmm. network coverage from uh, other experts that we're hearing, mm -hmm. uh, discussing at the moment, are saying that, yes, we're above 50. Uh, we're both 50, but we are definitely not just at 50. But I like says the, it has the capacity. Yes, and, and it's based on those discussions, earlier discussions by the telecoms operators that INEC came on board to actually say that they have the capacity oh. for electronic transmission. They've tested this. It, it, is, it has worked. So it's only a very few dark gray areas mm. in the country that may not have this full network penetration. As to the uh, question at hand, if these senators should mm. be punished, I don't yeah. think we should yeah. allow that to happen because we have our own powers. Nigeria is a sovereign nation. We should not allow uh, people like this to actually uh, make these kind of projections. Oh. We do not stay here and sanction U.S. senators or U.S. No. Uh, congressmen for taking any, any decision. So we I think don't. Nigerians in the diaspora need to know that we are a sovereign nation and we should not take certain issues that are domestic to the international arena. All right, we'll have to live with that. Somna Sambo, thank you so much.